Okay, so we're finding the greatest common factor for these first two. That's all we have to do. We don't have to show what's left if we're just finding the greatest common factor. So if we look at the coefficients 26 and 34, how do they split up? Well, the 26 is 2 times 13, and 34 is 2 times 17. So what's the common number that they can divide out? You can divide a 2 out. So we're going to get a 2 out of there. And then what is the greatest number of x's we can get equally from both of them? Well, this first term only has x squared. So since this, the other one has x to the fourth, we can't take 4 from that one because we can't take 4 from the first one. We can only take 2 from the first one. So we're limited to the lower number. So we can get an x squared out. So the greatest common factor for 17 is 2x squared, and that is d. And let's do the same thing again for 18. If we look at all these numbers, we could break them all apart uh, doing factor trees and see what they have in common. But if you did that, you'll come to find out that, um, especially looking at 26 is 2 times 13. None of these other ones are multiples of 13. So it's the 2 is the one thing we're going to be able to pull out of there. So we pull a 2 out of all of them. And how many x's can they give? Well, first one has x to the 6th. That can give 6. Second one is x squared, that can give 2. And the third one has x cubed, so that can give 3. We're limited to the one that's got the least, and that's 2. So 2x squared, again, is the greatest common factor. Now, for 19, 20, and 21, we're going to also write what's left when we factor something out. So for number 19, we say, what can we factor out? Well, they're, both, they're all multiples of 2, so we can factor out a 2. And they all can give it at least one x. So we can get a 2x out of them. Okay, So I'm going to run through, and I'm going to first eliminate the ones that uh, aren't correct. Now, just to point out, uh, answer D here is it written exactly the same. What that is suggesting is that there's no common factor. There's nothing that you can factor out. And therefore, we would just rewrite it. But that's not true. There's something we can factor out. We can factor out 2x. So then what's left? What's the first term when we divide it by 2x? 2x cubed divided by 2x. 2 divided by 2 is 1. x cubed divided by x is x squared. 1x squared or x squared. 4x squared, if we divide it by 2x, 4 divided by 2 is 2. And x squared divided by x is x. And then finally, we've got 8x at the end. If we divide 8x by the 2x we factored out, 8 divided by 2 is 4. And x divided by x is 1, so there's no more. We pulled the 1x that it's got out front. There's nothing left. And that's it. Now, if, so we can see that that's answer A. If the resulting trinomial that we see here could be factored, if we could break that apart into two binomials, we would do that. And that's kind of what B is suggesting, but as it turns out, this doesn't, for the, the two binomials for B, don't foil back together to be this. Like, this does not factor to that. So it's not that answer. Um, and in fact, we can't break this apart. And as you get more proficient, you'll come to understand that that's true. You can't factor that apart. Okay? Um, and part of the reason is that no matter how you break down the 4 here, 1 times 4 or 2 times 2, they're going to have to add together to be the middle term since they were the same sign because it's positive. And 1 and 4 adds to 5, 2 and 2 adds to 4. Neither of them add to that. It doesn't work. So our answer is A for number 19. Now, for number 20, what can we factor out? Well, 25 and 35, the coefficients, are both multiples of 5. We can pull a 5 out. And the first term has w to the 6th. The second term has w cubed. So we can get 3 from both of them. And if we divide 25 by 5, we get a 5. And if we take those w to the 6th divided by w cubed, we take 3 of those 6 away. We've got 3 of them left. For 35, we divide it by 5. And 35 divided by 5 is 7. 
and we took all three w's away there's w to w cubed that whole thing is pulled out front so it's just that and i said this before if you have the same variable in all of the re resulting terms if there was w's in both of these that would mean that something went wrong you didn't pull the highest number of w's out that you could or you otherwise didn't write the resulting binomial correctly okay so this is a good sign that one of them doesn't have a w because that's kind of what you need one of them is going to lose all of what they've got and so we look for where that answer is we've got 5w cubed times 5w cubed plus 7 and that is b great uh, one more. Let's do this one final one. 54 and 9. Oh, those are both multiples of 9. So the whole 9 comes out. And individually, we look at the, the individual variables. We look at C. The first term has C cubed. The second term has C to the fourth. Okay, there's three C's we can get out of both of them. And for the d's, the first term has d to the fourth, second term has d squared. What can we pull out? Well, we've got it. We're limited to the lower one, d squared, and that's what we can get out of both of them. And let's just look and see whether any of our answers have that at the start. Yeah, a does, um, b does, c and d don't. Um, we can't get c c to the fourth out of the first term. So C and D are already eliminating themselves. Can't be those. Now what's left? Well, what's 54 divided by 9? It's 6. That first term, 54 C cubed, D to the fourth. We can get three of those C's away, C times C times C, leaving none left. They all got pulled out front. But there were D to the fourth, and we can divide out D squared to leave D squared inside. Okay, And then the second term, 9 divided by 9 is 1. We don't need it if there's anything else left over. And so what do we divide out? C cubed. Well, there was C to the fourth on that second term, and we only took C cubed out, so there's a C left over. And then we took a D squared out, and that's what it actually has is D squared, so there's no Ds left in there. And again, like I said on this last problem, if we did it right, um, one of the variables will be like each of the variables will be not part of one of the terms. So this one doesn't have C, and this one doesn't have D. That makes sense, because if they both had C, we didn't pull enough Cs out or something went wrong. If they both had Ds, we could have pulled more Ds out or something went wrong. So it's a good sign that uh, one of these terms doesn't have a C term, and one of these terms doesn't have a D term. So let's look at what we've got. Um, B. B has 9C cubed D squared times 6D squared plus C. Done.